Hey guys, so this is the tutorial portion of this video. I do have to apologize. I do have Stella in the background right now. Um, I forgot that I actually have a huge floral order on Friday, and so my business partner is going to be here soon with my floral delivery. So anyway, if you hear something in the background, it is Stella. So um, I'm going to show you how I got this look over here on this side. So the first thing that I did was I did apply the... Uh, Urban Decay Anti-Aging Eyeshadow Primer Potion, so the little sample that came. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, this when I do the review of the palette. But the very first thing that I'm going to do is just take a little bit of the color Strange, which is the first color right here, and I'm going to apply that all over my eye area, which is going to help me blend the rest of the shadows. She is going to be chattering up a storm here. Okay, so then I'm going to take a flat shader brush and I'm going to go in the color Liar, which is this color right here. I'm just going to pack that color on there. I love the consistency of these shadows. They're gorgeous. And I'm basically just placing that all over my lid area from the inner corner all the way to the outer corner. So, nothing fancy. Sorry if I'm kind of in the way. I had to change the angle because I Stella is going to turn the TV on and off while we're doing this, so I didn't want there to be like a million different distractions. Okay, so once that is on the lid, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take a blending brush and um, I'm going to basically go in with the colors Factory and Mugshot, so I'm going to get a little bit of both. Sorry, I really didn't think this through. Did you get stuck? I'm sorry. You okay? Here, take Mama's hair clip. So I have both of those on the blending brush, and then I'm just going to take that into my crease. Please don't touch. Don't touch that. Oh, and my hair is crazy because I had it up in a hair clip. <laughs> What a disaster of a video. That's really not supposed to be a disaster of a video. Okay. Okay. So once I have that in my crease, and as you saw, I went a little bit above my crease as well, I'm going to go ahead and take the color Limit right here on another blending brush. And this, by the way, is an E35. It's a tapered blending brush. So I'm going to get a little bit of that on there. Tap off some of the excess. And then I'm going to go around the outside edge of where I put the factory and mugshot in my crease. So I'm basically using this as a transition color. With that original brush that I put this strange down, the names are always kind of funny, this color right here, I'm going to get a little bit more of that, and I'm going to put that along my brow bone. And the TV's on. <laughs> Hopefully you can't see that. Oh boy. Okay. Then I'm going to take a flat definer brush. I'm going to go in with the color Blackheart, which is the very last color on the end. And I'm going to put that along my bottom lash line. I'm not being too precise with it because I'm actually going to be blending it out with something else. Get a little bit more on there. 
and I'm going to use that to line my top lash line as well. This is going to be totally in the way of the camera. We'll see if that helps a little bit. Probably not. I think I just made it worse. Bye. Here we go. How's that? great liner color. It's nice and dark, but it's not like super dark. Come back to me. There we go. And I think I'm going to have to adjust this side just a smidge. Okay. Again, brush off a little bit of that excess there. Then I'm going to take a pencil brush and I'm going to go in with the color Nooner, which is this color right here. Just get a little bit of that on there. Oh my god. Okay, look. Just give me like two more minutes, okay? <laughs> Sorry, guys. And then I'm going to essentially smoke out my lower lash line with Nooner. What's going on with that eyelash? Honey bear, please don't climb on the exercise ball while Mama's trying to film. You're so nice. Your listening skills are at an all-time high today. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Brush away the excess and then go in one more time with my blending brush. And just kind of perfect that a little bit. Make sure it matches the other side. Make sure I have these connected in the corner here so there's no separation there. Okay, so that is essentially the eyeshadow part of the tutorial. I will tell you what I have in the rest of my face when I continue this video after she goes down for a nap. I just wanted to get this part filmed. So, see you guys back with the finished look. Hey guys, so if you're wondering why the camera quality is different from the tutorial, it's because my camera that I was first using ran out of batteries. Of course, Murphy's Law is in full effect today. So let's get into the review portion of the Naked 3 palette. So I'm going to go ahead and first compare the Naked 3 with the first two Naked palettes. And then I will also compare it to a couple of other palettes so that you kind of have a sense of do you need it or do you not need it. Um, so here is Naked 3. I showed this in my video yesterday, but I did use my iPad, so I'm sure the quality wasn't quite as good. But you are getting 12 eyeshadows here. They are each 1.3 uh, grams. And um, the packaging is, um, it's very nice packaging. Um, it's very sturdy. It is what I was really fond of with the Naked 2 palette, um, that same metal case that you're getting. Mirror is nice and big. So let's compare to the original Naked. So obviously packaging, they've changed that drastically. This was just like a, like a velvet covered cardboard essentially, which was fine. Um, I mean, it's definitely, I have one of these in my professional kit and it's never gotten damaged or anything like that and I travel with it quite a bit. So um, this is the original Naked compared to Naked 3. So Naked 3 is on the bottom and the original is on the top. So you can see the predominant difference here is that um, Naked 3 really has more of the rose and purple toned shades, whereas the original has more of like the brown and bronzy toned shades. For me, if I had to pick between these two, I would probably go with Naked 3. And um, I would go with Naked 3 because for me personally, my eyes are green. I know a lot of you guys think my eyes are blue. They're actually not. I think they might come off as slightly blue on camera, but they're actually green. 
Um, I find that rose gold and purple tone shades really do well on green eyes. They really make them pop. So because of that, while this is a staple in my professional kit and I use this on a lot of brides, um, I don't find it quite as flattering on my eyes. Even though I've used it quite a bit and I really do enjoy it, it I would say if I had to choose between the two, I would go with three. And again, this is just my personal preference. I know some people love the original and don't think that they should have ever come out with any other nakeds. But anyway, this is good. I'm glad I have it. But so far, I prefer three. Let's compare it to Naked 2. So Naked 2 was where they changed the packaging and they came out with this metal case, which is great for traveling, super secure. It snaps shut. It's almost a little bit hard to get open. Um, they also switched over to the brush, which I think they did in the original Naked as well. But when I bought mine, it was like when it first came out and it still came with the double-sided liner, which I kind of wish that they were still doing. I would rather have the double-sided liner versus the brush, but that's okay. So here is Naked 2, and that's going to be on top. Naked 3 will be on bottom. Predominant difference here is that Naked 2 had more of the original, um, not original, but um, more cool tone shades. So um, you can see it's definitely very different from Naked 3. So I think so far they have done a really good job of coming out with, oh geez, oh geez, three completely different palettes. I don't know how this is going to work here. So all three very, very different. All three the same amazing Urban Decay eyeshadow formula, very pigmented, very creamy, very easy to blend. Um, a lot of shimmer. Um, I will say that the Naked 3 has about the same number of mattes that um, Naked 2 had and there was one, two, actually no I'm a big fat liar. Um, Naked 2 had two matte shades, sorry there were three, blackout is matte. Naked 1 or the original Naked had one, two, two matte shades. And then Naked 3 has 1, 2, 3, 4. So it seems like with each successive Naked palette, they are adding more matte shades, which is awesome. I think that they're kind of listening to people's feedback in that, you know, people are wanting a palette that has a good mix of both matte and shimmer shades. Um, but the formula is, like I said, the same incredible formula that has been consistent from Naked 1 and 2. Um, very creamy, very easy to work with. Um, like I said, pigmented. I always use all of my eyeshadows over a primer, so I never have any issue with wear. Um, I've never worn any of them without a primer, so I can't tell you that. Um, if you're not using a primer, I really suggest going and getting one. You can even find a good primer at the drugstore now, like the Essence Eye Heart Stage is a great one. Um, you know, I believe L'Oreal makes one called Decrease. There's lots of options out there. Um, you know, Milani, everybody's making an eye primer. There's no excuse to not have one, especially if you have oily eyelids. It makes a huge difference. But it does also help with the wear of the eyeshadows. So um, today I did decide to do my eye look over the anti-aging primer potion. And let's just kind of talk about these real quick. So there's about a week's worth of use in each of these little packets here. Um, essentially, you just take the top off. Um, it's pretty, um, like I kind of clamped this shut again because there's just a tiny opening that the primer potion comes through. And um, I don't think it's gonna like dry out or anything. So anyway, um, I would have probably rather just gotten a small, like sample size of just one of the primer potions versus this because this you can't travel with this once you open it 
Um, so for example, like a, a size like this. So this came with my 500 point perk from Sephora. I think this would have been absolutely perfect to include because this I can take traveling with me. Whereas this, once I open it, like it's got to stay at home. So anyway, this is what I used today. And so far I really like it. I don't notice a difference between this and the original, but then again, I haven't been using it for an extended period of time and I'm not really to a point where I think my eyelids are aging. So Whatever, I can't really tell you too much about this. Um, I'll tell you, it's probably gonna be in an empties video. I'll tell you what it's like after using it for about a week. But let's get back to the shadows here. I'm just gonna do a couple of swatches for you. Um, I'll swatch the ones that I used in the tutorial because I think those might be kind of nice to see. Um, okay, so Limit is this color right here. It is just a really nice, um, beige with a purpley tint to it like a rosy purple tint to it it's matte um on my middle finger here is nooner and nooner is what i use to blend out the top of my crease it is also a matte it reminds me a little bit of tease from let's put tease on my pinky so it reminds me a little bit of this is Tease from the Naked 2 palette, and then this is um, Nooner from Naked 3. Sorry, I'm trying to keep all these names straight. So I would say that those two are the most similar. They're definitely different, but um, kind of the same idea. And then on my ring finger here is Liar, which is what I used all over my lid. Now, let me wipe these off and then show you guys what I used in my crease. In my crease, I used a combination of, and I just mixed these two together, Factory right here on my pointer finger and on my middle finger is Mugshot. So these two I mixed together and used in my crease. And um, this looks really kind of chunky here, but that's just because my hands are so painfully dry. So the shadows are really smooth. It's just that like my hands are really rough right now. So not attractive, right? And then I'll show you on my pinky blackout, which is what I used for my liner which is just a really pretty dark purple with, um, and it looks like a gold shimmer. So those are the colors that I used on my eyes today. Um, a couple of other, so strange, let's do dust. Dust is a little bit, um, that's very shimmery. It's coming off a little bit chunky. And then let's do trick. And then buzz okay okay so buzz is on my uh, pinky finger right yeah here is dust middle finger is strange which is what I used for my highlight and all over and then um, oh my gosh what did I do so ring finger is dust. <laughs> this is so funny. Uh, I should have done this in some kind of different order. I believe that this is this is trick. Sorry, there we go. Trick is on my pointer finger. So there's a few of the swatches. You're going to see lots and lots of swatches. Um, they're not going to come off really well when I'm like recording. So. Um, try uh who does good swatches on their blogs try crystal uh crystal is 007 i will link her blog below um i know that she recently received this palette so i'm pretty sure that she's going to do swatches on her blog so um check out for swatches there um and i'll try to see if i can find some other people who have done swatches on their blogs um so but anyway so here are the shadows one more time So um, I had a request to compare this to the Lorac Unzipped palette and last night I went ahead and kind of looked to see how similar they were. Now they're similar in some ways in that, oh god this is so hard to do and I'm like, <laughs> this is really hard. So here are the two of them next to each other. So you can see that Lorac Unzipped, which I have used several times in tutorials, 
is more of that rose gold leaning um, color palette. I would say that they are similar in some ways in that a lot of the tones are the same, but none of the colors really match up. They are different. However, I think if you have unzipped and you really like it, and the magnet is <laughs> putting these two together, if you really like it and you find yourself using it a lot, I don't know that Naked 3 is necessarily going to be different enough to warrant seeking this out, at least anytime soon. Um, I really do think that you can probably achieve a very similar looks with unzipped that you can achieve with Naked 3. Again, they're different but not like vastly different. Um, same high quality eyeshadow in that both are very pigmented. Um, you're going to get about the same number of mattes. Yeah. There's one, two, three. There's four mattes in unzipped. And then, like I said, there's one, two, three, four. Four mattes in Naked 3. So I think that they are different, but I really do think if you already have this, I don't know that Naked 3 is a necessity for you. So again, that's all personal preference. But if I had to choose between the two, for me, I would probably choose to, as much as it pains me to say this because I love Lorac eyeshadows, I would probably get rid of the unzipped palette if I had to choose between the two. Mostly because these are just a little bit, um, I like the tones of these a little bit more. It's more, especially these a lot of these colors they have more of like a purple purplish base to them not intense but a little bit more of a purplish base which is something that I really like in eyeshadows because again I think that purple looks beautiful with green eyes so yeah there's your comparison of those two I can't like I don't want to say for sure that like Lorac isn't worth it because it's it's totally worth it and I'm glad that I have it but I would immediately probably give this one up and keep this one if someone held a gun to my head <laughs> so there's that comparison another comparison that somebody asked about was the Naked 3 compared to the new Laura Mercier Artist for Eyes palette so let's compare those two to each other okay how am I going to do this <laughs> so hard to do okay hopefully this mirror from the artist palette is not um, blinding you so you can see that they're very different I don't really see very many similarities I mean with a couple of the lighter colors I think that you could probably like find some dupes in here but not enough to where it makes these two the same now here is the one, like, if I had to choose between both of these, I don't know that I could. It would be, it would be hard for me to choose between the two because I just, I really love the, oh God, <laughs> just like killed the African violet with my nail. Um, I really love the purple tones in this and I am just having such a great time playing with this particular palette. It's very, the colors are so extremely pigmented and so soft and just easy to work with and creamy and beautiful. Um, someone had mentioned that they really didn't seem to be getting a lot of good payoff from the Laura Mercier uh, shadows. And I found that surprising because for me, like I have found all of the colors um, to be extremely pigmented and not chalky and easy to work with. So I don't know if there was maybe like a bad batch. I don't know if that can happen with eyeshadows, but, um, I've not had any bad experience with the Laura Mercier, um, eyeshadow palette. So 
these two not the same um you are again getting some of like the purple tones in this but they they're different so i would say um if you were trying to decide between the two i don't know what to tell you because i think you should probably have both um which isn't helpful at all for me like I want both like there's no way that I would get rid of one or the other um so there's the comparison between those two now I really got to say like overall I'm super glad that I have naked three just because I've kind of become a collector of the series obviously I think that you are getting a lot of bang for your buck with these shadows you're getting 12 eyeshadows um, I believe this palette was $52 so that's an amazing deal for that many eyeshadows. I think you're getting good variety. Um, between the three, you probably have all of the colors that you could possibly need. And I think that this would probably be enough for like your average person. But, um, you know, if, if you're a little bit of a collector, <laughs> then, um, you know, you're, you're going to go and get 85 more palettes like I did. But... I really, really am glad that I have it. I'm glad that I got my hands on it um, when I did because I think it would drive me crazy to not have it. <laughs> you know, a lot of my subscribers were like, I'm getting it in the mail in like two days and I can't wait. Um, it's beautiful. It really, really is beautiful. Um, I'm definitely going to be purchasing one for my professional kit because I really do think a lot of brides would enjoy these colors. Um, a couple of the eyeshadows I will say are very um, like the glitter that's in them makes them slightly annoying I think that I would probably use them with a little bit of fix plus on my brush to avoid some of like the chunkiness like when I was showing you like the dust sorry the dust the buzz and then trick next to it those have quite a bit of chunky shimmer in them I know a lot of people don't like that, so that may be a deterrent for you. Like I said, for me, I don't have an issue with it. I just wet my brush a little bit, and then I never really have to deal with a lot of that, like, chunky fallout that you get from those. Um, all of the colors are beautiful. I just really like it. I wish that I had more eloquent words. <laughs> for this palette but just know that I think it's totally worth it even if you already have the first two I think it's a totally worthwhile investment if you like the shades that are in here again it leans towards purpley rose gold tones so if you don't think that's flattering on your skin tone or your eye color don't get this because you're just going to hate it and you're going to regret it. However, it's pretty. <laughs> it's so pretty. Um, I can't imagine using this on somebody and thinking it was unattractive. You know, like I think I could make this work on pretty much anybody, but you have to like the way those colors look on you. It doesn't matter what I think they look like on you. So hopefully that helps. I don't know. I'm probably just creating a bunch of like people who want this just because like I wanted it. <laughs> Maybe not. Probably not. Um, I think that was a little bit of a um, full of myself statement. But I think it's I think it's totally worth it, you guys. Hopefully that was helpful comparing it to the Laura Mercier as well as the Lorac Unzipped Palette. Um, I will certainly be doing more looks with this, so look for some other tutorials coming up probably next week and the week after, or maybe not. I think I'm having my surgery the week after. Ooh, that just made me have a little bit of like a panic attack. Um, <laughs> it's going to be okay. Um, you, you'll see me using this quite a bit in the very near future. Um, but the rest of this week, I'm going to be giving you guys some more in-depth reviews of some of the other bit, um, holiday palettes that I purchased. So um, look for those coming up the rest of this week. Um, just one more quick note. I talked about it a little bit yesterday. The packaging 
is very, very nice. Um, the inside of the box is pretty. It's got purple roses. Um, on the back, it does tell you all of the different primer potions that you get to try out. Tells you the names of the colors. Shows you the brush. Um, it's really pretty packaging. It's um, you know rose gold toned. Um, the box is embossed, so some of the letters are raised. Um, you can feel this like design, this like netting type design on the top here. It's embossed on there. I think this would be so cute sticking out of a stocking. I think it's a beautiful gift. So if you are trying to think of a gift for a girlfriend that loves eyeshadows, that you think loves rose gold toned eyeshadows, um, like my nieces, Grace and Sydney would go crazy for this. So um, I think this would be a beautiful gift for anybody. So anyway, well, let me know if you guys have questions based on this spastic review. <laughs> And um, I'll come in just a little bit closer here so that you can see what the eye look turned out like. I will list in the information box what I am wearing on the rest of my face. And um, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed the tutorial portion. Sorry that Stella was involved and um, that you found the review helpful as well. So again, leave me questions down below. If I don't see any of you because you are busy doing family things for the rest of the week, have a fantastic Thanksgiving and um, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.